joint ventures um, are normally used for uh, overseas investment right in the case of overseas investment the um, uh, the possible cultural conflict is shadowed by the fact that when a company goes in to an overseas market there is definitely a problem of culture the company is moving from one kind of culture into another kind of culture in this uh, situation it makes sense for the company to tie up with another company which has adapted itself to that new culture and therefore a joint venture is normally used when a company moves overseas let's look at uh, overseas uh, trade and investment which is becoming um, very important uh, by the day one thing to remember is overseas trade overseas investment is a two way process right just as it gives us an opportunity to uh, trade overseas to invest overseas it also gives overseas companies the opportunity to enter our own country and our own domestic market it may in turn have an impact on our functioning within the country the second point to be noted is that um, yes if um, we uh, calibrate this our overseas uh, invest overseas uh, trade sufficiently we can use it as the starting point for overseas investment the overseas trade can lead to a growth in um, customer perceptions about our company which in turn can be capitalized on for investment in that overseas country another advantage of uh, overseas um, investment is that uh, it opens up uh, the avenue of uh, cheaper finance Uh, in one of the earlier um, sessions we had seen that uh, interest costs are uh, much lower in uh, the developed countries like the united states the united kingdom um, many countries in europe interest rates are much much lower than they are in uh, india so a company from india if it invests in uh, uh, one of those uh, overseas um, one of the other countries it can um, take use of this cheaper finance and of course there is finally the question of being able to spread the risks we've so far seen the advantages of being involved in overseas uh, investment right but let's look also at the barriers to overseas business one uh, let's classify these barriers as uh, legal barriers and uh, non legal barriers right legal barriers uh, to uh, doing overseas business one is quotas till a few years uh, back uh, there were quotas uh, even for textiles different countries in the world had certain amount of certain percentage of textiles which they could export to other countries fortunately those quotas for textiles have now been removed however when it comes to uh, japanese cars into the us um, uh, that's that's uh, another uh, quota which uh, used to persist for a very long period of time though it's now disappeared then you have import bans which uh, prevent certain kinds of products being imported into the country um, as you would be aware uh, before liberalization in india uh, virtually uh, nothing could be imported right we are now in a situation where uh, perhaps uh, on an uh, maybe 5 or 10% of products uh, cannot be imported anymore then when it comes to foreign ownership there are uh, restrictions right that's that's another uh, uh,
difficulty in uh, doing overseas business. Again, in India, uh, before liberalization, uh, overseas ownership was limited to a very, very small number of uh, areas. Even today, though uh, overseas investment is possible in India, but there are uh, very strict limitations on the percentage of holding which it is possible, which it is possible for the overseas investor to have. And then finally, there is the legal barrier of uh, tariffs. Tariffs uh, are the uh, import duties that are put on a particular product. Now, import duties, uh, whether it is 10% or it is 15% uh, or 20%, the import duty put on a product is sufficient to make that product less competitive in that particular market. This is another legal barrier to trading in the market. Uh, other barriers to um, overseas business are language and culture, you know, skill levels, uh, a company in moving from let's say India to Africa may find that uh, it is not in a position in uh, that uh, location to access the same kind of qualified personnel that it is doing, that it is able to do in India. On the other hand, a company moving from a country like India to uh, a country in uh, Europe, for instance, may find that the wage levels there are significantly higher and therefore the economics of uh, that particular operation may therefore be different. And finally, there is the question of infrastructure. Here, any foreign company coming into India would find that the physical infrastructure in which they, which they see in this country is inferior to what they are used to in their own country. So, this, these are the kinds of uh, barriers that uh, exist in um, overseas, in particularly in the case of overseas investment.